restaurant style pizza made right at home. It is so delicious, a thick border, a cheesy crust. You're going to love it. Hi guys, now remember, I have shared with you how to make this pizza a good 10 years ago, but it has been a very long time since we have done an in-depth talk through restaurant style pizza. And when I say restaurant style pizza, all I mean by that is a classic round thin crust with a gorgeous border, light and airy, absolutely delicious. And I'm gonna walk you through it very easy and very simple. You're gonna execute this because I know you can because these tips and tricks are gonna help you create a beautiful pizza at home. The real focus here is the dough and sort of the outcome of the whole thing. Um, but I'll also show you my very quick tomato sauce that I love to do for pizza um, as we get through it. So let's talk dough. Very simple, you're gonna need all purpose flour which I already have in the bowl of my standing mixer. To this, I'm going to add some sugar. The sugar helps feed the yeast, also helps color the crust ever so lightly. To the sugar, you're gonna add your yeast. Now, I've said this to you before, the yeast I use is magical. It will make any person that's afraid to work with dough, it will turn them into a professional. There is never a time where this yeast does not work. I will have a link for you in the description of this video along with all the things that I'm using because this to me is key to making sure any dough that requires yeast works beautifully. It will not frustrate you. It will not make you crazy. I promise it's gonna work like a charm. I've only added those three things and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick little mix. Let me go get my dough hook attachment. Okay, now with the speed on low, we are gonna stream in some warm water. Now you notice I haven't added any salt just yet. I like to add my salt once you get the water in. You're gonna take some salt. Now I am using fine table salt today. If I were using a coarse kosher salt, you would use one full tablespoon, but because I'm using a fine table salt, I'm only using two teaspoons. And I'm just adding it in here like so. And it's gonna take a bit for that flour to get incorporated. And what I have here is an additional tablespoon of flour because for some reason, this particular amount takes a little extra flour to get the dough to come off the sides of the bowl as it mixes, which I'll show you once it gets there. You see how the dough is sort of sticking to the sides of the bowl? This is where this little tiny bit of flour comes in. It'll help kind of release from the bowl and then just let it go until it all comes together, which will not take very long. I have an oiled bowl ready. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more flour looking great. I'm going to speed it up for a second. Get the dough onto a lightly floured surface. You don't want the dough to be sticky. Um, you don't want it to be wet, but you do want it to be tacky. Like you don't want it to be like a wet batter, but you, you want it to be really sort of supple like that. And if you just need a little sprinkle of flour as you go, avoid adding too much at once because you don't want this to be dense. You want it to be really, like I said, supple and gorgeous. And that is what you're looking at. And by the time you add, what was that? Like a tablespoon all together, just to knead it into a ball. It's like, look, see, let me show you. It's smooth and it's gorgeous and it's exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Once that's done, you're gonna take an oiled bowl. Really important that your dough is in an oiled bowl so that it doesn't form any crusties anywhere. And we're just gonna cover this up with some plastic wrap and you're gonna pop this somewhere warm so that it can rise um, until it's more than doubled in size. I'll show you almost closer to triple in size. And it could take anywhere between an hour and a half to three hours, really depending on the environment, how cold and drafty it is, or your yeast, they could take more, it could take less. For me, this always takes about two hours and I put it in my oven with a pilot light on, don't turn the oven on, um, and it's like the perfect 105, 110 degrees that it needs to proof oh so perfectly. In the meantime though, 
while that rests and does its thing, we are going to make the easiest and quickest like five ingredient tomato sauce that I think is a perfect canvas for your pizza making. So I'm gonna, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, to make the sauce, now I really am partial to a no-cook tomato sauce, but I know not everybody feels the same way. So we are essentially gonna make a no-cook sauce, uh, but we're gonna cook it. <laughs> Basically, I would do this with some really good quality tomatoes that I hand crush, and then I would put a little fresh garlic in there, some basil, olive oil, salt, and a little oregano. Uh, but you can do the exact same thing by cooking it, and that way you have a cooked, like, quick marinara sauce. Um, and it's pretty sublime. Like I said, I am very partial to a simple sauce when it comes to my pizza because that way I have plenty of versatility that doesn't compete with toppings and whatnot. Um, and I just happen to think that this is really delicious. Fresh garlic, extra virgin olive oil, please, because we're only using a few ingredients. So we want to make sure that those ingredients are the best we can find. Fresh basil from the garden. These are my home canned tomatoes. I canned them last year, and then I have one jar of just classic passata, and then I had a little jar of cherry tomatoes. So I'm adding that in there. Once that starts to sizzle, I'm gonna add these in. Oh, that smells good. That smells so good. I wanted to tell you that Joe corrected me, I'm adding the basil right in, that there is no such thing as a pilot light pretty much anymore. What I mean is just a regular light in the oven. You know how you can turn a light on to see how things are baking? You can just leave that on the entire time as it's rising and it warms up the oven. That's what I meant. So I added the basil. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add a pinch of salt. And I'm just gonna let this cook partially covered for maybe 20 minutes or so. And then I'll just turn it off and let it cool. And then we'll pull the pizza dough out, hello, and we will make pizza. Dough is looking spectacular. Took about two hours for me. Now I'm going to just add a little flour to my work surface. Not a lot, you just wanna make sure nothing sticks. I've got a little baking sheet here with some parchment paper that I just drizzled a tiny bit of olive oil on. Now I'm gonna take this dough and I'm just going to cut it into two because this dough makes two 12 inch pizzas perfectly. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna take this ball of dough, if it's just a little sticky, you can add some flour. I know I work fast, but the whole point to this is to fold it a few times and then just go ahead and knead it into a, a ball essentially. And if it just gets a little bit sticky, just feel free to add a touch more flour, but it should never feel wet. It should just feel slightly um, tacky. And then at the bottom, I just like to pinch like so. I'll do another one in slow motion for you. And then you're gonna take this, place it right here. Leave that alone. Let's work with the second one. I'll do it a little bit slower. When it comes to dough, you kind of want to work quickly just because you don't want to form any crusties. And, but basically you take your very supple dough, okay? If you were to stretch it out into like a little disc, you take the sides and you fold them together, right? Then you take the sides, fold them together. Fold them together, see that? Except I do it from the very top and then it works on its way to the bottom. That's pretty much it. And now this, very, very important, that this dough needs to rest for a bit. And what I like to do is I like to leave it room temperature for 30 minutes in the fridge for 30 minutes. You can do this part, you can do this the night before. I just pop it into the fridge overnight completely and then just let it come to room temperature and let it rise a bit the next day. Um, but you know, I plan on baking this tonight, so I'm gonna pop this plastic wrap on top. Like I said, 30 minutes room temperatures, 30 minutes in the fridge. When it goes into the fridge, 
you are going to preheat your oven to 550 degrees. If your oven doesn't go up to 550, it will certainly go up to 500, so do it at 500, but for me, it's 550. You're gonna pop a baking steel or a pizza stone on the lowest rack that your oven goes on, you know, the lowest rack in your oven, and you're gonna let that preheat for 30 minutes along the oven preheating. It's pivotal that that oven is extremely hot when you're ready to make your pizza because it's the heat that's gonna give you the rise of that beautiful border. It's gonna cook your pizza perfectly. That's gonna give you the most perfect end result. Um, if you don't have a pizza stone or a pizza steel and you're someone that loves making pizza from home, I suggest you invest in one. They're not very expensive. I will list a few of them in different for different budgets in the description box below, but they will take your game to the next level when it comes to pizza making, and I just want you to have a great result. If, however, you wanna make this tonight and you don't have a pizza steel, you can go ahead and take two baking sheets, flip them upside down so that they're side by side, and place those on the bottom of your oven rack on top of your oven rack on the very bottom of the oven and then preheat those as well. I won't give you the exact same result, but it will work definitely in a pinch. I'm gonna let these rest and then I'm gonna preheat the oven in the meantime and then we rock and roll. Look how gorgeous, okay? I don't mess around. I do not mess around. If you feel like after 15, 20 minutes on the counter, your dough is like looking a little too risen, you could just pop it in the fridge a little earlier. That's all, okay. Oven's got, oven is going. I've got my dough. You wanna dust it in some flour. Okay, I'm gonna try and work slow. However, um, you, the best pizza is when you work really fast, okay? So you've got your dough. I'm gonna teach you how to roll it by hand because it's so much easier than you think. It did take me a very long time to learn, but my dad makes wicked good pizza, so that's how I learned. You take your bowl of dough, you kind of flatten it, okay? It's a bubble. Take your fingers. You're mainly going to work with three fingers right now on either side. You're going to push down the center, just the center, and then slowly work your way around the corner. Now, this is what gives you a border. You're going to take your index finger and your middle finger and the palm of this hand, and you're just going to work around like so. Okay? Okay. I'm going to keep trying to keep the camera on you, on me, I should say, for you the whole time. Now you can see you've got your border, okay? Now you can flatten it out. Now you're gonna take the, the palm or the side of your right hand, okay? And you're gonna, both hands are working to stretch that dough. But you see, I'm leaving that border alone because I like a nice risen border, right? Okay, now let me work my pizza peel over here. Now at this point, you wanna move your pizza peel or whatever instrument you're using to transfer your pizza. Dust it lightly. Okay, work fast. Watch my hands, okay? Watch, very lightly. You throw it up in the air, okay? You're looking for like a 12 inch circle, maybe a tiny tad bit bigger, but it kind of like shrinks back. Look how perfect that is, okay? Now, one of the tricks is less is more with your sauce. You want soggy pizza, you put extra sauce. You want perfect pizza, you put just enough. For a pizza of this size, you really should be looking at about a quarter cup, maybe a tad more of sauce, but not that much more because again, you're looking at very soggy pizza otherwise. This is perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. I feel like Papa Sal, you know? Take your cheese, I'm using Mott's. Uh, a mixture of part skim and whole milk is really your friend when it comes to making good pizza. Beautiful. Leave that dough, leave that border alone. Bellissimo, eh? Now, you could blow under it, but if you don't wanna do that because you don't wanna mess any germs up, you kind of just take the sides and introduce a little air under there and it should be, yeah, it's perfect, okay? Can you see in my oven? You see where my pizza peel it, my pizza steel is, okay? Wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's gonna take about eight minutes. 
I need my watch. In four minutes, I'm just putting my timer on. In four minutes, I'm gonna flip it. I'll show you because what's gonna happen is the back, okay? The hottest part of the oven is in the back. That part's gonna start to cook a little bit faster and, and color a little bit faster than the front. So we're just gonna flip it. So I've got my uh, timer on and I will show you when we flip it and then uh, we'll get that one out, put the new one in. And really, I mean, obviously you can go crazy with the toppings, okay? You wanna do pineapple and ham? I'm not judging you, okay? Because I am all for you living your best life. And if that's what you wanna do, who am I to judge, okay? I mean, I would never because my dad would disown me, but that's a different issue. Uh, but you know, go crazy with the toppings. We're here to just learn how to make restaurant style pizza. The rest is up to you. It's been four minutes. You can see that side is cooking faster than this side. So we wanna keep things even and then put it back in. Look at that. Gorgeous. This just came out of the oven, so bear with me. No flap, okay? No flap. We ain't about that flap life up in here, okay? Can you see the golden brown crust? I don't know if you can, but if I tilt it, the cheese may... Is it? Oh! Hot, 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 hot. Let that cool. While that cools, I'm just gonna make the second one because we hungry. Um, anyway, if you wanna watch it happen again, we're gonna move really fast. So this is gonna take seconds, really, because I let this sit too long. So now it warmed up a bit, so I have no choice but to move super quickly. I can't do it one-handed, I'm not that good. I mean, I'm good, but I'm not Papa Sal, that I can do it one-handed, or my Uncle Tony. The problem is I need a big, bigger pizza peel. I'm gonna leave, well, I'm actually gonna not add the big garlics in because if Mia bites on a big garlic, I might as well go sleep with the chickens because she says it's too spicy, which she's not wrong. It is a little bit spicy, it's a little bit hot, you know? It's a little bit hot, a little bit spicy. Mm, it's gonna be good. Gorgeous. She beautiful. Beautimous and gorgeous. That, I mean a little bit too big, but you know, who's gonna complain about a pizza that's a little bit too big? Not nobody. Well that bakes, we're gonna cut that into it. We're gonna cut into that one. Listen for the crunch. Well, maybe you didn't hear. Hold on. You hear the crunch? Oh, I just want you to see. Look at the hollowness right there. Can you see it? Right in here. See that? That's a good sign. That's a good sign, okay? No real flop. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give that a 9-4. I'm gonna give it a 9-4. If you know, you know. I give it a 10, but then I feel like I'm cheating on Papa Sal, and that just feels wrong. Ugh. That is gonna be better than most takeout. And listen, I love me a takeout pizza, okay? I love supporting local businesses. It's one of the reasons why your community thrives, so don't stop doing that. However, if you do want a project this weekend, uh, this is it. Yeah, so, bomb. Laura in the kitchen, I'll come with a full recipe. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.